1,000 a week, I don't even... Today, let's talk about money. This is an old one ringgit. I remember when I was growing up, I had a daily allowance of one ringgit to bring to school because back then, a plate of fried rice was 50 cents. So my mom said that giving me one ringgit means I have 50 cents to spend and 50 cents to save. And we all had this like little piggy bank, all of us, me, my brother, my sister, look, mine even has an, have my name on top of it. I still remember, I was very, very proud to show my mom at the end of the year, like, you see mom, I have a lot of money stored up because I only had one plate of fried rice. I wasn't the kind of student who spends a lot of money to buy like stickers or mechanical pencil, you know the shaker we had, good, 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 good thing. The problem with me was that I think around like eight or nine years old, I had like growth spurt. I was the kind of person who bought a lot of food. All my money was spent on food. I couldn't save any money. And I remember having to tell my mom like, Mom, I don't have any money left to store in my piggy bank. My mom was like, okay, we're just gonna give you two ringgit then. I need to go out to grab some food because uh, I am craving for something nice. Okay, what well, we're gonna order? I'm so heavy. I want McNugget. I'm at McDonald's drive-thru and I have KFC voucher. I thought I could come here and use a voucher. Speaking of spending, now I have to spend. Can I have satu chicken McNuggets? Double filet fish Spicy chicken McDeluxe? Double cheeseburger? Oh no, sorry. Double cheeseburger set. Uh, do you want anything else? Uh, Sudala. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like the older I get, the more things I'm exposed to, the more things I tend to want. Therefore, the more places I could spend my money on. Because of that, we have to be so much more careful in the way we spend money. I'm going to my friend's place to pass my friend the food. I'm a good friend. You should be my friend. So if you want to be my friend, please subscribe. You get food. Uh oh. It's raining. It's falling. Hi. Hi. Since my friends are here, I'm gonna ask them a question. I've got a question to ask you. How much money you spend this week? How much money you spend a week? How much money do you spend a week? Uh, less than 1,000 I think, a week. Less than 1,000 a week? What do you spend on? Am I the poor one or what? what 1,000 a week is a lot. I think around 800, 600 to 800. Can I be your friend? Why do you spend so much? 400 a week? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's normal, yeah, it's right? Okay. 400 yeah, yeah, yeah. a week, right? This fella said he spends 1,000 a week. You have to expect you spend about 100 a day. Yeah? No, wait, do you guys like actually write it down uh, and know that you spend this much? Or it's just a rough figure? I think it's a rough figure. I chose this place because the, the light is off my face. Anyway, the first tip is cut it out. The thing about money management is not how much money you earn, but what decisions you make. You need to learn how to cut out on all the unnecessary expenses. For example, do you need to buy that fancy pen that you saw your friend is using? That's why you decide to buy it. I am guilty of it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't spend money, but you should spend money wisely. So I came up with this one week test thing where whenever I want to buy something or I see something I want, I will write it down in a journal. Like number one, I want a new pen. Or number two, I want a new pair of socks. And Think about it for a week. The week later, I'll open up the book again and cross out the stuff that I don't think I actually need. And that actually helped me save lots and lots of money. Because I realized that a lot of things we only want at that moment, at that spur moment. I feel like us nowadays, because we have social media, we are constantly bombarded with all sorts of advertisements and things that you need to make. This is called discipline. Oh, my hand, red color already! <laughs> Tip two track 
it down. You can only manage what you measure. So you will have to keep track of where your money goes if you want to manage it well. I'm not sure about you, but I am a scatterbrain. This would literally happen to me. For example, I would take money out of the ATM machine and uh, two weeks later, I open my wallet and I'm like, where did my money go? Small brain. Or if you think about keeping track means, oh, you have to take a notebook out and write down. Nowadays, there are tons of apps that allows us to track down our expenditure. The thing is, they are usually not integrated with our bank account. Hey guys, I'm editing my video right now and I thought this could be the perfect time to bring this in. So, I am using the UOB Mighty app. It has a feature called the Mighty Insights, which allows me to check my weekly and monthly cash flow activities, simplified and categorized into interactive charts for me. And it also provides me with savvy financial tips. And I am using the UOB's Ladies Savings Account, which provides me with complimentary female cancer coverage of up to 200,000 ringgit. So if you use my referral code UOBKOE, you will be able to get a 60 ringgit Lazada eCash voucher when you apply online. If you want to find out more, I'll link it down in the description box below. Now let's go back to the video. <laughs> Tip number three, break it down. You need to break down your budget or at the end of the month, you have a breakdown. Yeah, get it? Yeah, get, yeah, it get it, yeah, get it, get it. Got it, got it. Anyway, you need to plan and budget your spending if you want to make it work. Think of it as a recipe. You need to know what goes where and how much of it. So things would less likely go wrong. I know you guys don't like complicated stuff. So here is a visual example of the 50, 30, 20 rule. Imagine, this is how much you earn. Split 50 and another 20. This is what you need, this is what you want, this is for your future. What you need, what you want, and this is for your future. But the most important part of this practice is that you need to know what you need and what you want. What I need is food, supplements, vitamins, or things that I need to survive. Dog food for my dog to keep her alive. What I want is probably a new toy for this for her, so that's the difference. Come here. So what does this 20% for your future mean? It means money that allows you to make your life better for you in the future. An example, money that you're going to use in case of emergency or money that you're going to use to invest to improve yourself financially. Disclaimer here though, I am not a financial expert. So these tips helped me and I hope it will help you in the future too. Cut it out track it down, break it down. Personally, I do have a lot to learn about money management. But as I grow older, I realize that we do have to think about money, not in the wrong way or materialistic way, because how we take care of our money reflects a lot on how we take care of ourselves. These days, everyone is talking about self-care, caring for our mind, our body, and our emotions. But don't forget to care about money too. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not about having more money or earning more money, but knowing where your money goes and making smarter decisions with it. So let's all start to love ourselves more and love our money more. Good night.